Hello everyone, happy October. October is my favorite month uh, in the entire year. I love the cooler days, the beautiful colors. Uh, it's time to harvest my garden, bring all the veggies in. Um, I just love this particular time of year. And there's something so fun about seasons changing and newness that comes with each season. Spring brings about new growth and a fresh start and summer is warm and everything is in a season of growing and strong and plentiful. Autumn brings about harvest and the process of starting over. And winter brings about coldness, pretty snow, but also some, some bareness and rest to the ground. And just like we have these seasons every year, we can identify seasons within our own lives. Newness, growth, change, plentiful, a time of harvest, a time of barrenness and sadness, and, and so forth and so on. And the Bible tells us that there are these seasons in our life and there's a place for everything. In Ecclesiastes 3 it says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. And then the chapter goes on um, and the verses continue to, to talk about all the different things that there's a time and place for. And if anybody knew these verses to be true, it would be the Israelites. When you read the Bible and you read the journey that the Israelites went through, from being in slavery to um, being formed into the tribes, into God's nation, to st settling in the promised land, to the back and forthness between them following God and being disobedient, to putting kings in place. Their whole journey is kind of a wild ride. And them as a nation, they went through so many different seasons and changes in their journey. But there is a specific time when God gives them, gives a command to Joshua. It's after they've left Egypt, left slavery, they've crossed the Red Sea and they've wandered in the desert for 40 years and now Moses has passed. And, um, and God is moving them into the promised land. God gives them a special commandment. So in Joshua um, chapter, chapter 1, it says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, the Jordan River, and you and all these people into the land I am giving them to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised Moses. Okay, so he's telling them, go over the Jordan. And then in chapter 4 of Book of, the, of, Book of Joshua, um, they, they passed over, and this is what it says. When all of the nation had finished passing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Take twelve men from the people, from each tribe a man, and command them, saying, Take twelve stones from here out of the midst of the Jordan, from the very place where the priest's feet stood firmly, and bring them over with you, and lay them down in the place where you lodge tonight. And then in uh, verse 21 it says, And he said to the people of Israel, When your children ask their fathers in times to come, What do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know. Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you passed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea when he dried up for us until we passed over. So that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty and that you may fear the Lord your God forever. God purposefully tells Joshua to have the people of Israel set up stones, set up pillars as a memorial so that they would remember and that their future generations would know the faithfulness of God and his promise. He's doing exactly what he told them he would do. And at that very point, it's all the beginning. He has moved his people into this promised land, and now they're going to start conquering and settling there. And after all that the people had been through, the years and years of hearing about God's promise to, to them, it was in that moment that it was happening. And God says, set up this memorial to remind you that I am a faithful God and I am fulfilling my promise. And just like the Israelites, with all of those seasons that they've gone through, we can identify and we can say we've had those seasons in our own lives. And how many moments are there that we can go, go back and pinpoint the times of God's faithfulness and provision to us? 
just as those 12 memorial stones the Israelites set up serve as a witness, as a testimony of the faithfulness of God, we too should think back over our lives and pinpoint moments where we can say, right there, God came through through for me. Or right there in my story, he said he, he did what he said he was going to do. Or this moment right here in my past, God was faithful to me. And when we take those moments in our lives and we use them to remind ourselves in the hard and the painful seasons of life, which will come, we remind ourselves that God is faithful and he's always with us. And we can use those moments to tell others about God and how he does the same thing for them. If you've never reflected or or taken much time to think back over the course of your life and remember and dwell on the goodness and faithfulness of God in your life, I want to encourage you to take some time today to pinpoint those moments, to set up those 12 stones just like the Israelites and remember what God has done in your life and for those around you. And then I want you to hold fast to those moments when the difficult seasons of life come. Let me pray for you. God, I thank you for every single person here that's watching, for every single person that's here at New Hope. God, thank you that you are always working on our behalf and that you are faithful and you provide for us over and over again. Lord, help us to pinpoint those moments in our lives where you have been faithful. Lord, let us set them up like a stone, like a memorial, that we may remember that you are a good and faithful God. Lord, we love you. Bless everyone who's watching this. And in your name I pray. Amen.